for another look at the morning papers. Uh, here with me reviewing them are the broadcasters and writers Gemma Forte and Edward Adu. So welcome again to both of you. Uh, our third little dip into the Sunday papers this morning and uh, a huge amount around. Uh, Gemma, you're going to take us to the Sunday Mirror first of all and this is our top story today. Uh, the news of the, of the nightmare facing people living on roads but also the, the many holiday makers that have travelled there in the last week and um, now the island hit by wildfires. Absolutely, and those wildfires are a direct result of the extraordinarily high temperatures that roads and much of southern Europe have been experiencing this summer. Um, there is a clear link to climate change, so it's a very worrying situation. And for these people, imagine the horror. It's your summer holiday. There you are, packed up for the week or two weeks of the year that you look forward to so much. And it ends like this, literally leaving hotels perhaps just with the clothes on your back. And as you look at these pictures of these people stranded and disparate and requiring help with no shelter, it's impossible not to make a correlation to the, you know, the pictures that we see of refugees who are having to flee their homeland, be it Syria or, or wherever. And you know, migration is such a, a topic in the news all the time at the moment, but it is only going to get worse if climate change continues to ravage countries like this, sadly. But yeah, horrible, horrible news, and it's in every single newspaper today. Yeah, exactly. And um, awful for uh, anyone living there, worrying about their livelihoods, of course. But in the meantime, yeah. as you say, a kind of a, a nightmare for holidaymakers who, who went to have a relaxing time and have had 40 degree temperatures and now had to be evacuated from hotels. Yeah, a bit of a nightmare all round, isn't it? Um, Edward, take mm. us on to the um, Sunday Telegraph next. And, and this is the story of the 1975 doing a festival in Malaysia. Uh, tell us what happened. So, yeah, they, they were in Malaysia, part of this music festival, and the frontman, Matt Healy, he kissed the um, the bassist of the band. And obviously, the, the story about this is about the laws uh, about um, homosexuality in Malaysia. I mean, you'd think in most countries that in terms of freedom of expression, it would be tolerated, but certainly not in Malaysia. Um, they deem it to be illegal and it, it could cost somebody 20 years in prison. So the, the band, um, so the band have, they've literally been banned from Malaysia. Um, the festival has, has, has been axed and it's actually ruffled feathers within the government with one minister saying it was a rude act. And it makes you think if artists or uh, bands or actors, actresses, if they go to countries like Malaysia, I mean, surely they should be given the freedom to, to express their views without um, fearing being cancelled. I mean, all, all he merely was doing was was, 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 was kissing the basis of, of, of the band. And I mean, it, this is what it's caused. So it just makes you think, if going, going abroad or going to those certain countries, and some some would say you've got to adhere to their rules and and their way of life. But I think when it comes to situ a situation or discussion or, or or things connected to this, they may have taken the wrong stance on this because clearly there are people in Malaysia who who, who are gay, LGBTQ, uh, who should be respected and have their views. But again, it's that's a, a discussion getting too political and. I suppose it's 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 down to their view, but clearly connected with the 1975, they're not uh, they they've been banned from the country, and it, it's it, it is a sad day for for us to be talking, reflecting about that story because no one should be banned. In, in the context of that story. Yeah, and they've gone on to cancel concerts in um, Indonesia and Taiwan as well, haven't they? So it's just not possible to, to carry on with, with their tour there. Um, Gemma, let's move on to The Observer. And um, this, is, this is quite an interesting take, actually, which I hadn't thought of. Um, the actor strike that we've heard about in the last week, where uh, Hollywood actors are joining writers in their strike over, over pay, um, how that's impacting on chat shows, uh, because, of course, they're not allowed to do any public publicity around uh, upcoming films. So uh, talk us through what The Observer is telling us about this. That's right. So this follows the writer's strike in Hollywood. Now the actors are on strike as well. The issue at the heart of the strikes are is something to do with pay, but also the fact that AI is coming. And you can understand people in the creative industries 
being very threatened by that, especially when AI can replicate actors' voices. So that's what's going on there. But it will have this knock-on effect to British shows such as The Graham Norton Show, such as, for instance, I don't know, Steph's Pat Lunch This Morning or whatever, where we have obviously all our homegrown stars and talent, but actually that kind of glamour from across the pond, especially on shows like Graham Norton, is quite shiny, quite interesting, especially if they've got big films to promote and they certainly get the viewers if you've got, I don't know, Tom Hanks on the sofa or Ryan Gosling or whoever. Um, so they won't be coming over for fear of being called scabs. So it's not just teachers, nurses, railway workers, it's actors as well. And this is the way that you express your, uh, your, your, your rights and your views by striking. Well, yes, and I think the British actors are also questioning whether or not they should go on, on the shows because they want to yeah. show solidarity. They might be looking like they're undermining their American counterparts as well. So uh, it might be an empty. So Gemma, it could be you and Edward on Graham Norton's sofa. I'm just putting it out there. He's probably <laughs> watching. On. I'd say we'll be on. I mean, I'm sure Gemma would be up for it. You up sure for it? Gemma Excellent. Oh, what are you sorted then? I don't. Now. Don't think it would be such a draw. Sorry. Oh, Maybe stop you it. It'd be marvellous. Oh, anyway. Thanks, nice, Gemma. It's <laughs> leaving me to it. <laughs> let's let's go to um, the Sunday Times next, Edward, shall we? And this is a story about the Beano, a, 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 a yeah. comic that I'm sure a lot of us read as a child. Uh, what's what's this story about? So it's, well, a lot of people may perceive the Beano to be now heading in a rope direction. It's being more inclusive, being more representative. It's going to be celebrating its 85th birthday, but um, with the help of the consultancy that rewrote Roald Dahl's uh, books, basically to remove offensive material, they've included new characters, more inclusive characters. And um, Anna Gemma, it took me back to reading the Beano back in the day, and it always, it always occurred to me that there wasn't anybody that looked like me in the Beano. You know, I was this kind of like, you know, podgy kid with a BMX bike, you know, uh, uh, crawling through the Beano, trying to find me. I could not see anybody that represented, represented me because the Beano was very outdated. You know, it was, it, it hasn't changed in, in, se in what, in, in, in 70 years. I mean, there's one bit of, uh, in this, in this piece, which says that there was, there was a reference to um, to, to, an, to an African slave like in the 50s, and it makes you think that why would even why would why it's it's dedicated targeting uh, children in particular, but having nine guys and and one girl, it certainly wasn't representative. So I think it's heading in in the right direction, and also I think trying to make it more inclusive. So it the the bullying aspect for, uh, for, for for kids as well. I think um, Fatty and Spotty, who are they going to be renamed as Freddie and Scotty? And this has been designed to help um, um, youngsters with acne, freckles, or weight problems, or being taunted by classmates. But uh, back in the day, I did not have that opportunity, and, and not many people did. So it, it was very influential. It did connect with a lot of people. And I suppose this is heading in the right direction. Some may say, well, look, keep it in its original form, but its original form to many would be deemed to be offensive and, and not inclusive. So, yeah, certainly a step in the right direction. OK, so a welcome refresh as far as you're concerned, yeah. OK, let's move on to the Mail on Sunday. And uh, this is the story about um, football shirts uh, for those World Cup, the Lionesses, who are currently uh, down under, just started their campaign. But Mary Earps... M missing out on having her own shirt, is that right? Yeah, Mary Epps is the goalkeeper and currently she's sponsored by Adidas, but so Nike have produced um, a shirt with her number and name on the back and there is a real demand for them. She has loads and loads of fans who would like to buy one and actually the the point of this piece is saying if it wasn't for Mary, England would have lost this match. She made some really, really fantastic saves. So she has said she's been quite hurt by the fact that there isn't a shirt for her. And she's saying loads of girls aspire to be goalkeeper like her and would like a shirt. So hopefully, with a bit of pressure, lots of people have got on the bandwagon with this and Nike might change their mind and produce one. Well, yeah, and she's such a popular player, isn't she? And as you say, such an inspiration. Yeah. Well, do you know what? I think we've got a minute. We've got time to squeeze in one more story, but I don't know what it is, Edward. I know it's in the Daily Star. Oh, so we're connected. So we connected, so we connected to oh. what Gemma is talking about about Mary in the show. So this is about the about expensive uh, replica, personalised um, um, 
shirts for Premier League teams. That they can cost up to £145. I think the long and short of it is uh, there's concern, cost of living crisis, can people afford it? And why does it why does it cost so much just to have yeah. um, a replica shirt? £145. Yeah. Many people will be questioning. Make it cheaper. Make it okay. cheaper. OK, we've got a couple of messages yeah. from today. Mary Earps and make it cheaper. That's what I'm going away with. Anyway, <laughs> thanks very much indeed, both of you. Lovely to no see you Thank you. for taking us Thank through the papers this morning. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Uh, still lots more to come here on Sky News Breakfast. We'll bring you all the top stories, including the latest on those wildfires in Greece. Do stay with us. Our app gives you the very best of Sky News wherever you are. Breaking news, videos and analysis. Evidence of the crisis. Podcasts watching us live. Take you live to Manchester. Whatever you get your podcast. All in one place and all at just the touch of a screen. The Sky News app. Download for free now.